everyone, Dr. Joyce here, board certified dermatologist and also creator of Tea with MD and all its associated channels. Today, I really wanted to delve into a topic that I get a lot of questions about from my patients in my day-to-day -day clinic, but also something that impacts my own day-to-day -day life. And that is the effect of stress specifically long-term stress on our skin and our hair. Now, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart because I am chronically stressed out. I mean, I work, I'm a mom to a very hyper and energetic toddler, and I'm also trying to balance all this social media content creation. So I do feel like I'm in a constant state of stress. Let me tell you, my skin has been paying the price for my stress this year. I have been having a lot of breakouts. My acne has been really bad, compounded by wearing a mask, of course. My hair has been falling out, just a lot of issues. So I took a deep dive into the effects of stress on our skin and our hair, and I wanted to put together a little explainer video for you all today. So to start off our discussion about stress and the effects of stress, on our skin and our hair, I wanted to take one little step back and think back to our biology, anatomy, physiology days, and let's talk a little bit about the HPA axis. HPA, that's your hypothalamus, your anterior pituitary gland, and your adrenal glands. This trio of glands actually helps control your body's fight or flight response. Your hypothalamus, which is in your brain, creates corticotropin releasing hormone, CRH for short, and that makes its Way down to the anterior pituitary gland, which is also a gland in your brain. These receptors sense that CRH and then they go ahead and release ACTH, another hormone that then trickles down through your bloodstream and goes and binds to receptors on your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands are these cushy little glands that sit on top of your two kidneys like little hats. When they get the signal of the ACTH, they say, okay, we must make and release cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. It helps your body respond to acute stressful situations. And it does that by, for example, releasing glucose or sugar into your bloodstream so that you can be active and ready to fight off a bear or run from an attacker. It slows down functions that you don't really need to do at that time. It controls and regulates your sleep cycle, etc. And these are all good things in moderation. Cortisol is great for when we need it, when we really need it. So in short bursts, when we're in a highly stressful situation and we need that burst of energy to get through it. However, what happens when you're chronically stressed? So when you have chronically elevated levels of cortisol, that throws off this whole delicate balance between your hypothalamus, anterior pituitary, and your adrenal glands. What happens is that your body becomes less sensitive to cortisol hormones. As this balance is thrown off, you start to experience all types of problems. One of these types of problems is that you'll have too much cortisol floating around chronically. What exactly does cortisol do to your skin? Cortisol helps to increase levels of sebum or oil production in the skin. And as you guys might have experienced, as I've certainly experienced this year, increased sebum production can actually worsen your acne flares. So that is one way that cortisol has a direct path to increased acne breakouts. High levels of cortisol can also cause increased inflammation in the skin, which, you know, we've already talked about acne, but increased inflammatory mediators can also worsen skin conditions like rosacea or psoriasis or eczema. Increased cortisol can also cause increased mast cell activation and that can cause itch. So all in all, we know that extra cortisol lying around can really wreak havoc on your skin. To make matters even worse, chronically elevated levels of cortisol can also decrease things that we really want to stick around in our skin. <laughs> things like hyaluronic acid and collagen, which reside in the dermis, which is a deeper layer of the skin. We already lose levels of these as we age. We also lose levels of these as we go about our days getting exposed to UV light and pollution and all these things from our environment. So it's even worse that stress is taking those good things we want away from our skin. All of that contributes to signs of aging in the form of wrinkles and saggy skin and more leathery texture of the skin. Aside from just the simple direct effects of cortisol, 
cortisol on the skin. We also know that increased stress can cause people to do more behaviors that could be harmful for the skin, such as picking at itchy spots, picking at acne, scratching a lot. All of these behaviors that could damage your skin barrier, cause breaks in the skin so that bacteria can more easily go in there, cause infections, and all that picking and scratching can also lead to the formation of scars in the form of brown spots that are really stubborn and hard to treat. Additionally, when you are stressed, certainly when I'm stressed, I get much more cravings for things like sugar, so like very sugary desserts or drinks. Some people, when they're very stressed, might turn to unhealthy behaviors like smoking tobacco or drinking alcohol, and all of those behaviors can really harm your skin as well. Stress doesn't only affect your skin though, it actually also affects your hair. And over this last year, because of COVID and the pandemic and all of the stress that comes with that, I have been seeing so many cases of what's called telogen effluvium in my clinic. Telogen effluvium is a condition where you get hair loss about three to six months after a very stressful event occurs in your life, whether that's a physical stress or an emotional stress. What happens is this large stressful event shocks your hair into changing from the growing phase or antigen into the shedding phase or telogen. All your hairs dramatically shift into this shedding phase and you'll start to notice massive shedding of your hair. A lot of women actually experience this after childbirth. I certainly did. Hundreds of hairs just started falling from my head. I would find it everywhere in the shower drain, on the chair, on my clothes, on the floor. There'd be like little puddles of hair everywhere. That's normal, you know, it happens. But we do know that because of heightened stress, that shock can occur to your hair. It's usually reversible, usually can last for up to about a year. Obviously, if it's lasting longer or if you're still having a lot of shedding, it would be time to see a dermatologist. Goes to show that stress doesn't only affect your skin, it can certainly affect your hair as well. So now that we know that stress is very harmful on the skin and the hair, what can we do to counteract this? I talk to my patients all the time. One big tip obviously is to decrease stress, but that's way easier said than done. I mean, I still live a very stressed out life and I try to decrease stress, but it's very hard. First of all, of course, you know, try any tips that you may have or strategies you have at your disposal to decrease that stress. Secondly, these are more actionable items. If you know that your skin is freaking out because you're really stressed, now is not the time to be switching around your skincare regimen and adding tons of very harsh exfoliating acids or chemicals to your skincare routine. Now is the time you wanna do a lot of gentle TLC for your skin. Try not to use too many acids like AHAs, BHAs. Try not to start a retinoid. Try not to get chemical peels. This is the time to really baby your skin until this stressful period is over and your skin can calm down a little bit more. Also we know that diet can play a big role in skin health. You want to fill your diet with things that are anti-inflammatory, things like antioxidants. So lots of dark green leafy vegetables, dark berries like blueberries and raspberries, vegetables like spinach and kale. Try to eat things that have lots of lycopenes like um, cooked tomatoes, things with polyphenols like green tea. You want to make healthy choices in your diet because that can certainly trickle down and have effects on your, not only your overall health, Health, but you know, on your skin too. Exercising can help to decrease cortisol levels as well. So if that's something you can make time for and incorporate it into your daily routine, that can certainly help. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. I certainly enjoyed this little walk down memory lane into learning about the HPA access or at least reviewing it again and looking at all the different ways that stress can affect our hair and our skin and thinking about ways that we can make changes in our lives to help heal our skin and hair. Because let's face it, stress is always going to be around us. Life is very stressful, especially as we're in this global pandemic. So we just have to do as much as we can to kind of counteract those effects. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. And also I am always open to hearing any thoughts or suggestions you have on anything else, other skincare topics or hair related that you would like me to cover. Don't forget to check out my other channels on TikTok, Instagram, and my blog, Tea with MD, for more information. Until next time, bye.